friends, it's Abby from Chic Peach and today we're going to be talking about decluttering paper from your household. This has actually been a highly requested topic and so I finally had some time to go over it with you guys. In some of my videos I do actually show you how I declutter some things but because a lot of paper in a household can contain private information, I am not going to show you guys exactly how I declutter some things. So instead, we're going to talk about actually reducing the amount of paper traffic that comes into your home. And to me, that is the first step. So if it never enters your house, then you never have to deal with it. How do we do that? I'm glad you ask. Go paperless. E-statements. The world is going electronic. Here we are on YouTube watching a video that is electronic. Nine times out of 10, if not more, you can choose a paperless option. All of my bills, every single one of them is paperless. So I try not to have any paper bills come into my home. If they are, I pay them right away and shred them. So first I wanna talk about that paperless option. To go paperless, you have to utilize your email and keep track of a lot of things that way. So if you're someone who really likes to keep up on your bank statements, your credit card bills, anything that is mailed to you or sent to you on a monthly basis, you're gonna really wanna make sure that you keep track of your email inbox and go through every single item to make sure that you don't miss any bills. But it's the same as going through your mail. So why not just do it on your computer? And then the neat part about this is you don't actually have to store those physical bills. You can save the email in your folders. You can make categories in your email inbox. So you don't actually have to delete the email when you're done with it. You can move it into a separate folder to save it for later if it gives you too much anxiety to delete it. The other nice thing is, I know Gmail does this for sure, you don't have to actually delete things. You can archive them. And so if it is something that you probably don't need, but you're afraid to officially delete it, just archive it. And then you can search for it anytime you need. A lot of times people like to have paper statements sent to their home because it is a physical reminder that bills are due and that you need to pay them. If this is how you function, if this is how your brain works, it's how I work too, don't worry. <laughs> You can set up recurring reminders on your phone, your computer, any electronic device that tells you at a certain point that you need to pay your bills. I have devices all through my life and I set up reminders on every single one. Some reasons why this is actually really great, aside from reducing clutter in your home, is it is actually reducing your carbon footprint in the world and we're not wasting as many trees by going paperless. Papers can get lost in your house, they can get lost in the mail, and your personal information is oftentimes on those papers. So by having less in your home, less paper in your life, there's less of a chance of all of that getting lost in your personal information out there for whoever to see. So now that we have reduced the amount of paper coming into our home, the next step is whenever you get something in the mail, bring it in and sort it right away. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I should do that. A lot of times, you know, when I'm coming in from the house, we walk in, set the mail right on the counter, and typically we just like sort through it real quick, trash or recycle the things that we know we don't need, like junk mail, and then we open up the important ones right away, try to do what we can, pay the bills, trash or shred it as needed, and then anything that needs to be saved, there we go. And I'm not gonna lie to you, we do have a junk drawer, and yes, sometimes if I don't know what to do with something, it will end up in the junk drawer. But that's a topic for another day. So now that we have reduced the amount of paper coming into our house, what can we do with the paper that's already here? Let's go through it. Now I can relate to a lot of you who really like to hold on to things, afraid to get rid of them because what if I need it in the future? As soon as I get rid of it, I'm gonna need it. Not always true, trust me. Nine times out of 10, if you file something away, you're probably not gonna get it out, ever. But on the off chance that you do need it, it's great to have it. So there are certain things that we really wanna keep and other things that are completely unnecessary that can be discarded. As for those things that you might, might need one day, we have this awesome thing called technology. You can scan it in, you can take a picture of it with your cell phone, log it in your computer, and then you can shred the actual physical copies. Now I'm not talking about sentimental things like pictures, greeting cards from people who wrote you really nice messages. Those are completely separate. No, I'm talking things like bank statements or payoff statements. Those are the things that you probably want to hold on to for just a little bit of time 
but that doesn't mean that you have to physically hold on to it. You can upload copies of those to your computer and that's where you can hold on to them. In this day and age, we have an amazing thing called the cloud. I have tons of things stored on my cloud and if I ever need them, I can access them from my phone, my iPad, my MacBook. Even if one device dies, which can absolutely happen, things happen to technology all the time. But if you have it stored on the cloud or on multiple devices, you can access it from anywhere. So if my phone gets destroyed somehow, I still have my MacBook and my iPad. If my MacBook dies because you know it's getting pretty old and I might need another one in the next coming years, if that dies, I can still access everything from my MacBook on my cell phone because I have direct access to the cloud. If I had a fire in my house and I had no copies of any of those papers on my computer, then yeah, all of those papers would be gone forever. But by having them on my computer, stored on the cloud, I can access them from anywhere. Now let's say I need to access one of these papers for a completely random reason. If I am on vacation and I need to find something for my bank account, well, guess what? I can log in online banking and I can go find it there. Or if I have it scanned into my documents on my cloud, then I can just pull it up on my cell phone instead of having to call my mom or my dad and say, hey, can you go to my house and access my safe or my file cabinet and tell me if you can find this paper that I can't give you much of a description on? <laughs> having it easily accessible from your cloud is going to be so much easier than having it somewhere in your house. The other nice thing is that you can actually name the file and then if you don't remember which folder you put it in on your computer or your electronic device, you can actually search through all of those files easily and more than likely find it that way. What can I say? It is a time saver for sure. Something that is really good to store are things like your tax returns. You'll want to store them for at least seven years. Now, if you have a digital copy of that, great. You don't need to store the physical tax returns. Taxes are very important to have. Even if you have a digital copy, for me personally, I like to have the paper copy as well. It's just one of those things that you probably want to keep stored. The great thing about having online accounts for banking, credit cards, all of those things is usually you can sign in and access all of your statements right there. It might be nice to store your account statements, but do you really need to store them? Probably not. You can save the digital copy on your computer. And then it's not laying around your house for someone else to find. They can be password protected, all of that. Something else that's actually really cool about going paperless is a lot of times you can actually get discounts on things for going paperless. Did you know that you can get a discounted interest rate from some banks or credit unions just for having paper statements? That's amazing. Literally saving money right there just by not receiving any mail or paper junk to your house. That's a win-win. I wanna actually circle back to the automated notifications to remind you about your bills. You can actually set up auto payments. So when you don't receive a paper bill in the mail, you receive an email notification instead. You can still have a notification on your phone to tell you that a bill is coming due, but you can have it automatically paid. So even if you get that notification, but you're busy and you forget to act on it, don't worry because that payment is going to be automatically made for you and then, as you have time, you can go back and check on it just to make sure that the payment went through. To me, that is so nice. I don't have to stress. I know that everything is paid on time and it's just all around less for me to worry about. How great is that? Another thing with technology is if you are somebody who is very visual, so let's say you have a budget set up and that's why you like to have all of your paper statements. Set up a monthly budget using an Excel sheet in your computer. Jot down everything that you know is coming in every month, how much it's going to be, if it's a range or if you have a specific number, you can mark that. And then each month, as you know that your bills are getting paid, you can go and check off. This one was paid, this one was paid. And you can have that set up for a year or two years and you can do do that as the months go by. I've actually done that for my budget before, especially after I went paperless for everything. It was really great to have a big picture for my budgeting system because finances are so important, especially when it comes to stress in your life and being overwhelmed, you want your finances to be in check. Money is one of the most stressful things in life. Now, am I right or am I right? If you don't have a lot of it, it's very stressful. And if you do have a lot of it, Great. What's that like? <laughs> Another thing is to 
opt out of things you don't need. Okay, really though, the, like the number one rule of decluttering is quite literally discarding what you don't need. So that's the same for paper. Place is sending you junk mail. If you look at some of those flyers, they sometimes they're like really thick um, cardstock paper and it's just a little ad that people send to you or it says, it's not even listed in your name, it just says current resident. Like it's not even personalized to you. If you look on those towards the bottom, it's usually in the fine print, they have instructions on how to opt out. You can call a number or you can email or you can visit a website and you can opt out your address or your name or your information. Sometimes I don't even know how these people get my information. It's scary, but I'm like, I don't care about whatever this is. I don't want the mail. It doesn't apply to me. Opt out of the things you don't need. Remove your name from the mailing list or the calling list, whatever the case is, even in your emails. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's usually a button to unsubscribe. And I do that all the time. Always trying to declutter my email inbox. There's just too much junk mail all the time. It's so overwhelming. I hate it. <sighs> but we're working on fixing it together. So now back to digitizing things that you don't want to keep. Documents, photos. There are absolutely good reasons to keep physical copies of things, like medical documents, things like that. Let's say you have a child with a medical condition and you need to take your medical documents with you on the go, or you're traveling and you need to have files with you. That's completely understandable. But you know, in my household, we don't really have anything like that. The most of our medical documents are just bills. So once they're paid, I shred them. Digital can also be easier if you just need to reference something. Like I said, if you have something scanned in or a picture of it and you wanna move it to your computer, title that document with what it is, the date, and then store it in a folder with like items. Then if you have to reference it in the future, you can go to that general folder with all of that information, go to the search bar. If you don't see it right away, go to the search bar and try to find it that way. If you don't necessarily have iCloud, you can go to Google Drive. Google Drive is a great way to store tons of information and you can access it from any device. So if you're not an Apple user or you don't wanna pay for iCloud, try Google Drive because that is actually free. You can upgrade your storage later on if you do need more, but starting out, it's a good amount of storage space, trust me. As for scanning, if you don't have a printer, that's totally fine. This day and age, as long as you have a smartphone, you're good. You can take a picture. As long as you can see the information clearly on it, taking a picture of something is completely fine. The other thing you can do is find a scanning app. I have seen tons of scanning apps out there. You can use a different app for scanning PDF documents. You can do a different app for scanning in pictures. I'm actually doing a project right now of scanning in all of my family's old photos from over the course of my entire life and trying to digitize them. If something were to happen to those physical copies, then we still have a digital version of them. Not to mention there's three kids and only one picture most of the time. So this way we can make duplicates of those memories and distribute them to all of us so that we can all keep them for the rest of our lives if we want to. The other nice thing is that a lot of those apps are free. Now, if you do want to pay for a higher quality scanning app, that's totally up to you, but you don't have to. You can do this affordably. If you're really not too keen on using apps or it's just not for you, you can also take in your documents to a print shop and ask for them to be scanned. I'm not sure if the print shop is going to charge you because it is up to the discretion of each print shop, but that's definitely an option if you're really not too tech savvy but you want all of your stuff stored electronically. Now, although having everything electronic is really great and convenient, you still wanna have your physical copies of things like birth certificates, death certificates, titles to your vehicles, information for your home, passports, identification, all of that. I like to have a copy of them on my computer in case I need to reference them while I'm away from my home. If something gets lost or stolen, then I have a copy to know what it looks like, then I can have it for whatever I need. But you still want to have all of those really important documents stored safely in your house, so we do have a fireproof safe to keep all of our very important documents and identification in. While you're digitizing everything, Make sure to keep that in mind that you don't wanna throw away 
everything. It's good to get rid of a lot of stuff because you don't need physical copies of everything, but there are some things that you don't wanna get rid of. So keep those certificates, keep those titles, and keep those ID cards. Unless they're expired, then you could probably shred those. And one last thing I wanna bring up are memory boxes. I am a very sentimental person, and so even though it looks like I have an easy time getting rid of everything, I really don't. There's so much in my house from throughout my life that is sentimental and I don't want to get rid of them. So I do have a memory box. I keep a memory box for my son. I keep a memory box for myself. And you guys can keep memory boxes too. And as far as things for my son, I do kind of the same thing with our really important legal documents. If there's something that my son made for me at daycare, um, there's like this, these little pictures that <laughs> they painted his foot and made a little watermelon out of it. I have that and I have a picture of it on my phone. So if something ever happens to that physical copy that I like having because it brings me joy, then if something happens to that, I will always have a digital picture of it to remember. Things don't last forever. They just don't. I'm just trying to go digital with everything because then maybe it can last a little bit longer. So my main three points for you today, just to summarize what I've talked to you about, is reducing the amount of paper coming into your home by opting out of the things you don't need, go paperless, and digitize the things that are already in your house that you don't need physical copies of. Once you can get rid of all of that, it makes it so much easier to see what's left and then organize from there. So as always, please let me know what kinds of questions you guys have. I'm here to help. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Until next time. See you guys.